Are you tired of being broke? We all want to be at a point where we're able to care for our families without worrying about whether we will have enough money to last throughout the month. We here at VP Nursing would like to give you five steps to get you started on your way to financial freedom. You see, now I am so thankful that I don't have to pull up my banking information prior to going to the gas station. I used to go to the gas station and I would say I want $2 on pump four. Have you ever done that? I was loud and proud to have those $2. Now I can fill up without looking at how much I'm being charged. And I'm not bragging, I'm just very grateful. My own financial journey was a series of ups and downs until I found a proven method to help me gain control of my financial future. I remember coming home one night and the, and the house just kind of looked especially dark. That's when I realized that the lights had been turned off due to lack of payment. I had my oldest in my arm, who was an infant at the time, who opened the door and attempted to turn the lights on and got nothing. It was very cold because it was winter time. We really did not have enough money to pay for that light bill. However, in order to get the lights turned back on, we had to pay a $35 reconnection fee, along with the money um, that we owed. We had to take money that was allocated for the house payment to save us that night. We ended up having to file bankruptcy. We had two cars repossessed. I struggled with how to gain control of my financial future. The number one thing that I had to learn is that you have to change your mindset about money. There are five rules that are not all encompassing by any means, but simple ways to get you started on your journey to towards financial freedom. Now I'm going to say a word that makes most people cringe. Budget. This is the first step. I didn't like budget when I first started to do that. The key to budgeting is bringing the entire family to the table and putting everyone on notice that the house is on a budget. There are bills that you're gonna to have to pay every month regardless. Car insurance and electric bills are examples of these bills. And then there are bills that you will hopefully eventually pay off, such as your credit card, your car payment, your house payment, and in order to become debt free. Now place the bills that you have to pay every month regardless on the first front part of the budget. And then place the bills that you will eventually pay off on the end of the budget. Now, it's going to change from paycheck to paycheck and from month to month, depending on, you know, how your, your paycheck comes in. This creates transparency. You are not able to change what you don't know exists. If you know where the bulk of your money is going, then that helps you get to your goal. Just remember that you can't fix what is not made apparent to you. Your family needs to be a part of the plan, so they are not leaving every light in the house on when they leave. They are not staying in the shower for long periods of time, although this may happen. And I guess in these instances, we have to look at the bright side of things and these they are taking a bath. Your paycheck will change month to month. It is important that you change from month to month that budget. Secondly, I also believe in tithing. 10% of your salary followed by 10% that you place into savings. And there are those that don't believe in God. However, this is a faith-based company, so we believe that tithing is important. The way that it works for me is that I give my tithes as, almost as soon as my check hits the bank. God said if you bring your tithes to the storehouse, then he will pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. The second portion I have going directly into my money market account. Money market accounts typically yield a, large, a higher interest rate than your normal savings account. The only caveat to the money market account is that you have to keep a certain amount in the account or you will be charged. If you are saving money to this account, there should always be money in that account, so it shouldn't be a problem. I usually tell my banker to hide that account, which means I can't see the account when I sign onto my online banking. Therefore, I can't easily transfer that money. I have to physically go into the bank in order to transfer that money from that account. Therefore, I'm less likely to transfer any more money if I had to go to the bank to get that money. Thirdly, 
you should practice focus payments. And this means that you pay one bill off at a time. Pick one bill that you would like to get paid off, typically your lowest bill, and focus on that one bill. All the extra money that you have should go to that one bill. Once that bill has been paid off, then you should focus on the next bill. For example, if you are paying $250 on bill number one, then you take that $250 and add it to the money that you are paying, paying for bill number two. This is the moment of truth. This is not the time to go out and buy a new car with a new car payment. This is a time for you to take the money from the previous bill and add it to that next payment. This process continues until you have all your bills paid off. Then you are debt free and you can save for that next big purchase that you have without worrying about the interest rates because you will be paying them cash money. The fourth thing is that you sh should do is to sell items that you don't need. There are clothes that you have that are too small or a size too big. Go through your closet and get those items and sell them at a garage sale. Now, if you're like me and don't want to do the garage sale and just plain don't have time, I have a friend that I'll put her information in the comments section and sells things on consignment. You can tag the things yourself for more money or she can tag them and she gets a cut of the money. So easy. Fifth, you should hang out with people who are trying to be debt free or who already are. There are many lessons that you can learn from them. I have a friend, Renee Brown, who says that if you hang out with non-broke folks, then you can get the tenth one. If you are the smartest person in the room, you are in the wrong room. I also think 10 years down the road and making purchases. You want to make purchases that will have lasting investment potential, like realty. This is Dr. Viola Pierce, the Nurse Nurturer, nurturing healthcare providers one message at a time. Remember, this is a dialogue. This is not a monologue. Leave me a comment about what you are doing to become debt-free.